You know, some people think having a model to bet sports is the holy grail of sports betting. Is it, though? We're going to explore what a model is and isn't, and then I'll walk you through creating your first sports model. All on this episode of Making a Modeler. Okay, before we dive into Excel and create your first model, let's talk a little bit about what a model is and isn't. So first off, a model is a lot of work. There's no way around it. You're gonna have to put in the time and effort to build a good model in order to get good results because that's largely what a model is, is garbage in, garbage out. I think we've all heard that saying. Well, if you feed a model crap statistics or uh, just very plain, ordinary statistics, it's not gonna give you a meaningful result that's gonna beat any market. It's gonna give you basically whatever you put into it. So if you put the time and effort into it to find statistics and metrics and parameters that matter in the correlation to how a game it plays out, you're gonna get good result. And I think that's a key point when it comes to sports betting is there's no easy street here. You can't just luck your way into uh, a winning system, okay? It takes a lot of hard work. It takes a lot of refinement. It takes figuring out what works and what doesn't work. So I would encourage you to go ahead and try to build a model or go down this path, but it's not going to be for everyone. There are many ways to win at sports betting and modeling is just one of them. So it's not the holy grail of sports betting. It might not even be the best way for you in how you approach sports betting. I've mentioned before that people have different inclinations when it comes to sports betting. Some are quantitatively slanted and then others are qualitatively slanted. So if you're a numbers person and you enjoy sports statistics and you enjoy looking at stats and how they correlate to the play, well then modeling might be for you. But if you're someone who, when they handicap a sport, looks at things beyond the numbers, maybe you're more of a qualitative analysis type of person. And this sports modeling might just seem terribly boring to you. And that's fine because everyone is a little bit different when it comes to sports betting. You can find multiple ways to win in the long term. So what we're going to do today is we're going to do a Monte Carlo simulation. So as you might infer from the name, the Monte Carlo simulation is sort of like uh, uh, gambling, uh, casino gambling in that uh, imagine you had a roulette wheel and you, you walk up to a roulette wheel and you put your money down uh, $100 on black. Well, you know, if you know anything about casino gaming, that the roulette wheel has about a 5% house edge. That doesn't mean that you're going to get $95 back for your $100 bet. It means that sometimes you will double your bet and win $100. Sometimes you will lose your bet and lose your $100. But over time, the more you play this roulette wheel, your result is going to end up being that the house wins about 5% of the money wagered. So in the long run, you end up losing 5% of whatever you wager. And the Monte Carlo simulation basically just bears that out for you. So today we're actually going to be working with a normal distribution curve. And if you've ever seen a bell curve, well, that's a normal distribution curve. The average, the mean is right in the center and that's the peak of the curve. So a normal distribution curve, basically one standard deviation, either direction of the mean explains about 68% of the results. Two standard deviations is about 95% of the results and three standard deviations explains just about all the results possible. There are some outliers within the tails there. But the point being is when we apply our Monte Carlo simulation, we're gonna pick a random point on that curve and then using the average and the standard deviation, we're gonna find what number that would result in. And then we're gonna do this a thousand times so that we can basically simulate the uh, model that we've set up 1,000 times to see what the result is. So why don't we go ahead and we'll just get started in Excel and I'll explain it as I walk through the spreadsheet. Okay, so let's move into Excel here. So what we're gonna do in Excel is we're gonna create a simple Monte Carlo simulation uh, using some simple statistics. In fact, uh, it's so simple that we're just using just one statistic that I've taken from the current NBA season, the 2019-20 season, and that is uh, three points made. So uh, what we've got here is I've gone ahead and I've scraped data 
and we'll talk about the scraping data another time, but basically the, the stuff I've scraped is the date, the visitor, uh, the three pointers that he made and attempted, and then same thing for the home team. And as you'll see here, I believe there's uh, 971 records here in this. Uh, I've taken all this and then I've summarized this data into a table here on the next tab. And so basically this is uh, all the NBA teams, the uh, number of games they've played, uh, the three-pointers they've made and attempted, their percentage. Uh, and then here's where we get into the fun stuff. This is their average three-pointers per game. And then the standard deviation of that. Now, the standard deviation is taken by taking the total population of all the games that they've played. So, for instance, for uh, the first record here for Atlanta, uh, that's the standard deviation of just Atlanta in their games uh, of three-pointers they've made uh, per game what we need to make a Monte Carlo simulation is we need to know the probability, uh, the mean, and the standard deviation. So uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to reveal a couple other cells just for the sake of time. I've already pre-populated these. And uh, basically we'll go ahead and we'll pull up Atlanta here. Simple lookup table here. What it's done is takes the uh, Atlanta Hawks and fills in the three points, three pointers they've made per game on average and uh, the standard deviation of that number. Now, to do a uh, simple simulation, basically we're going to be using a function of Excel um, that calculates the inverse cumulative normal distribution. Uh, what that means, if you remember the, the distribution curve that we showed, uh, basically this is going to pick a random point on that curve and then tell us from that what the probability of that point on the curve is makes more sense when once we see it happen. So function is uh, norm.inv and then what we do here is we take a random probability because remember we're simulating the probability here uh, random probability and then we take the mean and the standard deviation which we had in our little table here. So basically what this does is every time that Excel recalculates it's going to grab a new random place on that normal distribution curve. Uh, and just to kind of demonstrate this, if you hit the F9 key, it updates. And so you see uh, every time you hit F9, it's giving you a new simulation of uh, Atlanta Hawks three-pointers made in a game. Okay, that seems pretty simple enough, right? So what can we do with something like this? Well, one of the things that Excel has is they have the uh, what if analysis and they'll go ahead and they'll make a data table for you. So I'm just going to scroll over here a little bit and you'll see that I have pre-populated in uh, the numbers 1 all the way to 1000. And what we can do is uh, if I just uh, reveal this one here, this uh, cell right here, AB1, is basically just a reference to this cell right here which is our Atlanta Hawks simulation of one time. And uh, Excel has a nice little trick here. We're just going to select everything in this table. We're going to go to the Data tab. We're going to go to a What If in Analysis and Data Table. And you can leave the row input cells information as blank. But when it says Column Input Cell, I just pick any random cell that's not in the table. And basically, Excel's just using this as kind of a placeholder for as it does its calculations. It doesn't have to be anything you concern yourself with. Anyway, hit OK. And seconds later, it populates the entire table here of all of uh, 1,000 simulations. So basically, it runs this little simulation we did one time here. It runs it for 1,000 iterations. And we can just go down that list there, and we can see all the way down to 1,000. It's done it 1,000 times. So basically, what we've just done is created a Monte Carlo simulation where we take the uh, probability, the mean, and the standard deviation and run it through a thousand times to come up with a total. So what does this mean though? Like what do we do when we get a thousand different simulations? Well, you, you can then take the average of those simulations to answer some basic questions. Uh, for instance, so will the Atlanta Hawks have more than X amount of three pointers made? And in this case, we'll use the number of nine and a half. Uh, well, we can do that pretty simply here. All we need to do is uh, count up our simulation there on the right side and say uh, count if uh, AB2 to AB1001 um, is uh, 
greater than um, 9, well, no, I'll just use the reference here, greater than t14. And that should do it. And, oh, well, one other thing, just to turn this into a probability, we're just going to divide this by the number of... So there we see that 76.4% of the time, according to our 1,000 simulations, um, that the Atlanta Hawks do exceed 9.5 three-pointers made in a game, simulated-wise. Uh, and you notice this, this continues to update here because basically Excel's still calculating things in the background, and then it catches up. And any time a change is made to the spreadsheet, that's going to recalculate. Another, again, I'll hit the F9 key 77.5% uh, of the time. So you see, uh, the more simulations run, the more you know, random numbers you get. But if you run this multiple times, I think you're going to see it's going to always wind up close to that 76, 77, 75 number. Okay, so basically what it's done for us there is it's shown us that uh, if we were given a prop at a sports book that says the Atlanta Hawks, uh, what are the chances the Atlanta Hawks make more than nine and a half three-pointers in a game? And we could say, oh, well, 77% of the time they go over that number. So if they offer us uh, something like, you know, minus, minus 150 on that, uh, that would be a pretty good bet to make. So, uh, but we can go a little further with this, too. Uh, which team will make more three-pointers? So uh, we have the Atlanta Hawks up there. Let's pick another team. Let's say, uh, let's say the, the Dallas Mavericks. So what we need to do here is we need to create a new Monte Carlo simulation over here. And we're going to make this show up. And then we're also going to have an extra cell over here. So basically what we're doing now is we're going to create this data table. Uh, go over to the data tab, go to what if analysis, data table, uh, leave that one blank. In column input, we just choose any old cell and it'll create it on up here. And, uh, and then what I'm going to do right next to is it was this third column, and this is just an if then statement. If AB2, which is this uh, figure here, is greater than AC2, then uh, put a number one, because team one had more three-pointers. Um, and then if that's not true, put a number two. We're not going to work in ties just yet, but just a very simple if-then statement. Okay, so what we've done here is we've copied uh, all the way through the entire simulation, and basically the if-then statements for each uh, simulated game of all 1,000 simulated games to see which team is going to have more three-pointers made. Will it be Team 1, the Atlanta Hawks, or Team 2, the Dallas Mavericks? Uh, so in this case, the sportsbook's offering both at minus 110, and we can actually see by the, um, uh, the averages up here that Atlanta makes uh, about three less three-pointers per game than Dallas does. So, you know what, let's make these odds a little more fair. Let's say uh, 120 and minus 150. So after this, we need to figure out, based on our Monte Carlo simulation, uh, the probability for each of these results. So we have um, another count if statement here, and this time we're doing the count if on that third column that we created, and basically we're saying if it equals one, then uh, count it. If it doesn't, then don't count it. So what we've seen here is in the thousand game sample, 24.8% of the time, Atlanta Hawks have more three pointers, whereas with uh, Dallas Mavericks would be the inverse of that, so 75.2% of the time. So what's our edge here on these two bets? Well, uh, if you take uh, this, this extra column here, this is basically your edge on a wager at these prices. So in this case, uh, Dallas at a 75.2% probability that they're going to have more three-pointers, and you're laying only minus 150, well, that ends up being a pretty nice 25% edge. Uh, and again, these numbers are going to jump around a little bit as the, the page recalculates itself. But even if that was up to minus 200, this is still going to be a good bet for you to make uh, because Dallas is definitely going to have more. Now, if we were to have somebody like, uh, I'm just going to randomly pick Indiana. And an update. So Indiana actually makes less three-pointers than uh, Atlanta does on average. It runs the same simulation through, and uh, Indiana at minus 200 would, would be about a minus 53% uh, edge that you would have on that wager. 
Whereas if you were able to go to Atlanta at plus 120, you have about a 51% edge. Well, let's just say if this would have been, uh, maybe we just had a sports book that had this at minus 115, 115. So we can see that in that case, Atlanta has a, a big edge. So the point being here is when you run a Monte Carlo simulation, you can uh, you know, simulate out the game 1,000 times, 10,000 times, 100,000 times. Uh, it's up to you to be creative with these. But basically, this is your first model. This is a very simple, very inefficient model because we're just taking games played in a vacuum. Now, if we were to improve upon this, we would look into things like uh, who are these two teams playing tonight? And, uh, you know, maybe who is not playing for either team that may affect the amount of three-pointers they make in a game. And basically, once you have that projection and you have a standard deviation, you can then use uh, this method to build a Monte Carlo simulation as many times as you want to do it, run that simulation to kind of get a better understanding as to what your edge is on this wager, uh, or if you even have an edge. I think that wraps up the Excel portion of this, and hopefully that gives you a little bit better understanding as to how a model is created. Uh, it doesn't have to be scary. It doesn't have to be intimidating. Uh, it's actually pretty basic. And uh, with something like Excel, you can fire one up. Um, go ahead and try to make your own models. Uh, I'm going to put this example in the description for this video. Uh, you'll be able to download this spreadsheet to kind of work on this yourself and maybe improve upon it. Well, that'll do it for this episode of Making a Modeler. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and consider subscribing. Until next time, I'm Captain Jack.